Greetings, I'm Bill Jewell with Colorado-based Insulation Technology Corporation, Intec, and this is one of our iSeries videos. I wanted to talk a little bit today about insulation conditioning and how our machines actually accomplish this. Insulation conditioning is taking the insulation that you get in either a bag or a bale form and converting it from that compressed form into the proper install density that the manufacturer recommends. And you do it with an insulation blower. Um, now conditioning normally happens in three stages. The first stage is the effect of the operator as they put the material in the hopper, if they break the uh, bale up a little bit more, it'll help the machine a little bit more. It then falls in and hits the agitator that is continuously turning. The agitator's job is to break that material up into pieces small enough to fall into the airlock. Next, once it's broken up and the material starts falling down into the airlock, it is blown out continuously with air from the blower motor that operates with an explosive force and it's blown out. It is then blown out into your hose which then takes it up to the attic or wherever you're blowing it. Now, if you've checked your calculations, your square footage calculations, you know the math is all right and you're still finding that your conditioning is not uh, uh, accomplished enough, as in the material is not fluffed up enough, then it's time to investigate what's going on. The first thing that I always do when I investigate production issues is look at the seals in the airlock. If these seals have gotten weak, they're allowing air to leak around the airlock and come up into the hopper. Therefore, the, 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 force of the, the explosive force of the air coming into the bottom of the airlock doesn't have quite the effect since the air is leaking around. The cure for that is to put new seals in your airlock. Weak seals always equal poor conditioning, so that's the first thing you would look at. The second thing that I think that I would look at would be the condition of your hose. Now, old hose, when it gets really old, has a problem. The problem is that the ribs on the inside of the old hose get somewhat dull, a little bit dull. You want a nice sharp ridge on the inside of that hose and that's one of the things that help to beat the material uh, on the way out. Now, let's say that you've got new hose and it's still not helping any at all or not enough. So at that point, you might want to consider an extra length of hose. Now, I have this one laid out here a little bit. I use a come in with a three inch hose. This is a three to two and a half swivel reducer. So what you would run is 100 feet of your three inch standard ribbed hose, three to two and a half reducer, and then into a piece of two and a half inch hose that's 50 feet long. When you reduce it down like this, it keeps the pressure up in the line and it helps beat that material around against the inside of the hose and fluff it up even more. Now, need more conditioning than that? Close your slide gate up a little bit. If the slide gate's all the way open like this and the airlock's filling completely with material each time, if you reduce this slide gate a bit, it will reduce the amount of material going into the airlock and at the same time, the, the blast of air from the blower motor will have more of an effect to separate the uh, fibers apart. Now, need even, more, need even more conditioning? Consider maybe an upgrade blower motor. Um, now, can you over condition material? Without a doubt, yes. Over conditioning, if you had your slide gate all the way closed like this, chances are the material would be over conditioned, but remember your speed of install would go way down. So actually it's a balance of how far is your slide gate open, how much conditioning do you want, and how fast do you want to get the job done. Now running material through the machine a second time will also result in over conditioning. Now finally let's have a a little word here about coverage charts that are on the bags of insulation that you get or on the manufacturer's literature. Um, insulation is tested by manufacturers under extremely stringent conditions. They have all sorts of protocols they go through. They want to make sure that every test is, uh, is exactly like the previous test for consistency. This means that their testing is done under the absolute best possible conditions. 
Well, guys out here in the real world that you and I know about, uh, a world of hot, dusty attics, cramped, damp crawl spaces, bugs, and the occasional crazy customer you have to deal with. In that world, I think I would add about 15% to that manufacturer's recommendations to make sure that you don't run out of any material uh, at the end and you have plenty to finish your job with. So that's about it on conditioning. If you've got any questions, call me here at the plant, Bill Jewell. 800-666-1611. Usually you can find me at extension 107 or call my workmate, uh, Jason Brown. Have a good day. I'll see you later.